hey what's up guys and welcome back to making and today i'm going to be giving you part 27 of what if naruto became the god of lightning remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto had the ultimate nature bloodline over on anime king tree and enjoy that guys and they also post a brand new episode over anime king 2 of what if naruto was neglected and lost everything so go ahead and check out that and enjoy as well guys and remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and support and yeah, without further ado, would you to begin this new episode start, the intro. So the last spot we left off, Krama had told Naruto, for him to be called the God of Lightning, he must be able to completely harness and turn his entire body into lightning. So that is what Naruto did as he done brought down his hand a second away from driving the pike through some way to make the damage even worse as he already stabbed her once. As Naruto's body broke down into lightning, the speed was unnatural. No one. As the blink of an eye, Zetsu did not see what happened. Next thing he knew, he done lost his arms and legs as he were burned to a crypt. As Naruto grabbed Hidon and electrified his body to the point where there was nothing remaining. He returned back to normal as he rushed towards Samoy as he made his way towards Sakura. His body was agitated and that was something Krama told him not to do once he entered the state. If he's not focused and calm, the lightning would go out of control and affect him in bad ways. And that is what happened when he pulsed three times before dropping towards the ground. At least the Akaski members were taken care of. They made their way back to the village as Yujito was placed in an induced coma as her coils were really stretched thin. Sakura did as best as she could, but the girl needed rest. Right now, she just needed rest. Kakashi went by a few times to make sure that she was okay. So other than that, things went fine, as nothing was out of the ordinary happening. When Naruto did told Snadi and Jerry what he saw, the Renegon, as Naruto told them everything that Krama told him, know that their suspicion was confirmed, as that was rather troubling to hear that a beast that was known to be as the planet itself that can drink the ocean and split the earth, that was rather terrifying if the fox, the nine-tailed fox, was saying that his power did not compare to the Jubi. Yes, that was rather shocking. Jerry had a hunch though, as he told him that he would be fine as Naruto insists that he go with him. But Jerry told him that he would be fine, he was just going to gather some information and he can rain. As Nadi told him to be careful, as he told her he will. With that he headed off, as they didn't think much of it. But Snadi had this nagging feeling that something bad was going to happen. Maitre Umi came to the village, along with her guards, to talk to Konoha about the peace treaty that they were going to sign. As the woman was quite obsessed with Naruto it seems. As she wanted there to be a political marriage for them to get the signing fully on the way between her and Naruto. But Naruto was already in a committed relationship as he was going to be a part of that. Well, she tried her best. So with that out of the way, they talk about the political signing. As Naruto was able to get Snade to give him the permission to free Sasuke as the both of them battle. They caused tremors through the village that caused people to panic as Snade had to go there and knock some sense into them as they were pushing a bit too far. As the time passed, sightings of Itachi was saw. As Itachi was making his way through the land of fire, passing by with his partner Kisame. As Snadi gave Naruto and his team the mission to end this once and for all, as Sasuke was ready, he was finally going to face his brother. A part of him was extremely nervous. The other part was ready for the battle. Jerry had made his way towards a hidden rain. 
as he was gonna get himself in a lot of problem as well. Not even knowing that he was about to face a man that called himself a god. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I thought you guys can switch across the place and check out for yourself so it's the beginning of this new episode. Snazzy was currently at the village as she was in her office doing some paperwork. There was a lot to go over in her mind at the moment. For one thing, there was, she was cut off as it was a crack. She turned her head slightly as her heart seemed to freeze for a single moment before it returned back to normal. She looked at what crack. It was a photo. It was of her, Jaria, Shizune and Naruto. It was when Naruto convinced her to come back to the village. They had took a photo on the last day. After all, she had went by a lot of pubs to drink and not to mention gamble knowing that she was gonna be up to a lot of work because she wouldn't be on the road anymore because she was gonna be Hokage. So she gambled and drink as much as she could and they, and they took a photo together. Something for her to remember that moment. There was a long crack that went down the middle as Naruto was standing in the center with Jaria, both hands on his shoulder. Snazzy was at the right. She's only at the left. And there was a long crack from Jaria's head going straight down towards Naruto. Snazzy always believed in omens. Whenever she win big in gambling, something bad always happened. And this, this was a sign. She clenched her fists, praying to whatever Kami out there, whatever deity that can hear her, to bring them back safely. As she didn't know which one of them this was going to affect. But she just knew something bad was going to happen. She could feel it inside of her heart. Meanwhile, as that was going on, Jerry had just entered into a pub as he was currently gathering information. Up on a high tower as feathers. It looked like they were feathers at first, but it wasn't a bird. Instead, it was paper. Paper formed together as the upper half of a woman appeared. As she looked down towards the pub where Jerry had just entered, her cold orange eyes looking down towards the bar. As usual, Nagato was right. He was here. Meanwhile, that was going on. Itachi, seems like someone has found us, said Kisame as the both of them were making their way. As they had just finished another sealing ritual with another tail beast, Sami Hata was dancing in the light. Seems like they're not hiding their presence, Itachi. <laughs> this chakra is large. Well, what do you know? Seems we get a second chance at the Jinjuliki of the Nine Tails. Itachi said absolutely nothing as his back was turned to Kisame. But there was a small smile on his face. He was the one that made sure the Anvus had found them. A slight genjutsu here and there to lead them towards the location. He was glad that they did not intervene. Instead, they went back to Kanoha, giving information back. He was also happy that Naruto was here as well. As he needed someone to take care of Kisame as well. For the organization to fall, they must take out the heavy hitters. As Kisame had a big smirk on his face, Itachi formed a single hand sign. But there was no explosion, there was nothing cast. He did something but it was not happening yet it seems. Suddenly a kunai dropped down with an explosive tag. As both men blurred out of sight as the ground exploded. Blowing both partners to an opposite direction. As Itachi skidded to a stop. Stopping right at the base of a tree, a rather large tree in the forest. He did not move, he stood there motionless as he waited. He ducked as a tree was severed. The top half was literally sliced through, causing to fall as he turned. Seems you've gotten faster, little brother, said Itachi as he turned and came face to face with Sasuke, who was already holding on to his blade tight. Meanwhile, Kisame had a big grin on his face. All this just for little old me, he said, as he was looking at the group that currently surrounded him. That's Kunoichi from Kumo was there. Kakashi Hatake, that pink hair one, Kunoichi from Kanoha. And not to mention the God of Lightning. I must say, you guys must really see me as a threat to be throwing all of these precautions against me. As he turned towards Naruto, I've already faced you twice. Once when I came to capture you, the second time in that hologram of mine that you so quickly destroyed. You know what they say, the third time is a charm. 
Yes, and that goes both ways, said Naruto. As Kisame smirked at that, before he pulled Samehata off his back. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for this, he said. The moment those words left his lips, the man appeared above Naruto. A burst of speed despite his large size. Samehata came rippling down from the air. Boom! The ground under Naruto exploded as a massive force of Samehata slammed against the raging blade. As Naruto knees did not bend or budge, but the ground did explode underneath him. As Kisame smirked, seems you've gotten stronger. A lot stronger than last time, he said. I was waiting for this official battle between me and you. Samehata started to squirm a bit as Kisame narrowed his eyes. Sorry, but you can't absorb this lightning, said Naruto. As he started to push the right in blade, Kisame had to pull back Samehata as one of the spikes was shredded off. I'm surprised. What is that, said Kisame? Yes, this is lightning, but it's not chakra that forms it, said Naruto. As Naruto swirled the blade around, as Kisame narrowed his eyes with a seal on the right in blade, Something artificial it seems. Well it doesn't matter he says he duck. As a kunai passed over his head. He looked up as he saw the explosive tag on it. Boom the thing exploded. The moment it did. The ground exploded upward that guides of water. As they all had to jump away as the ground was surrounded. Flooded. Like a massive pond that just erupted from underneath the ground. As all of them landed on top of the water. Samui glanced around along with Sakura. Sakura said Kakashi. Sakura looked down as Kisame burst out of the water. But he had to stop as Samui lurched her leg forward. The man brought Samihata forward. But in an instant, he felt that simmering heat. As he turned, cursing the blonde, he dropped himself right below the water. As his Akashi clothing had been ripped. <laughs> He's a lot, lot faster than last time, Kisame said underneath the water. But this just brought him more joy as he went through quick hand signs. Hundreds of sharks seemed to materialize everywhere as they exploded out of the water, forcing the team to backpedal as it went after all of them except for Naruto. Kisame burst out of the water. Now, shall the real fun begin? He says he brought Samiata down. Meanwhile, that was going on. There was a crack and it exploded. Itachi was panting a bit, blood coming from his eye. Your illusion will not fool me anymore, brother. I've waited too long. I've trained too hard for this to just lose. As we start, this is not like last time. Yes, I can see. You have improved, Sasuke. But will it be enough? Will you finally be able to rid me from this world? That objective, that job that you want to do for so long. Do you think you have the skill to do that, little brother? Itachi asks. Well, let's find out in Sasuke as it was a poof. Two massive Fuma Shuriken came from his arm as he launched them towards his brother. As the battle kicked off from there. Meanwhile, that was going on. Kisame was sent sailing backwards. Lightning blade as Kakashi appeared behind him, driving the lightning blade right towards his back. Kisame stabbed Samihata in the ground as he used a twist. He kicked away Kakashi's hand and slammed his feet right into the man's chest, launching him backwards. As Kakashi poofed away, the real one burst from underneath the ground. As the man came up with an uppercut, as Kisame grabbed his arm and twisted, Kakashi lashed out with a kick, but Kisame used Samihata to block it. Samihata ripped through the bandages and shredded part of Kakashi's leg, but he poofed away once again. As Kisame turned and slammed the real Kakashi away with Samihata. Enough of your foolish clones, Kisame said, as he went through another set of hand signs. The water over the side started to twist and ride as it turned into a massive wave that Kisame jumped on. I'm coming for you god of lightning, he said, as a massive wave of water was coming down towards Naruto. Let's see you use those lightning techniques out here that you're so fond of, and fry your friends as well. As Naruto merely smirked, you know you should know something, lightning is not my own element, said Naruto. As he went through and sent a quick position, before he took in a deep breath. As Samihata could feel a chakra bubbling and boiling inside of him. As Naruto released a vortex of wind that was releasing a round ball around him. It exploded out violently. 
blowing the water away, forcing Kisame to leap as he twists. He brought Samihata down as Nurja parried with the right blade and knocked it to the side. He twists and slammed his leg in Kisame's stomach. The man staggered back before twirling Samihata like a brute he just tanked it as he brought it down. Samihata burst out of the bandages, all the scales extended to pierce right into Naruto, who flashed to a single hand sign. As he brought his hand up, a earth wall formed right in front of him as Kisame burst right through it. The moment he did, a fist enhanced with chakra slammed forward. The man brought Samihata up, but Sakura ducked underneath it as she was too close. Kisame twists as he twirled the blade. Sakura slide right underneath it as one of the scales extended and scratched her along the cheek. As she flipped and launched herself backwards, a massive fireball came rushing towards Kisame, who swings Samihata and simply tear right through it, absorbing the chakra. A blade caked with light and slashed after him several times, forcing him backwards as he looked towards Samoy. As he glanced towards him, he felt the ship as he turned. As Naruto rising blade clashed against Samihata once again, his eyes then widened as Samihata sucked the chakra from the clone. As Kisame turned, BAM! A fate slammed right into his face, launching him backwards as he slammed through the earth. The man picked himself up the moment he did, Naruto dropped, his feet covered in lightning. Kisame twirled on the ground as Naruto's feet connected. The old earth was torn apart and uprooted. The man quickly got to his feet and staggered back, panting a bit, but nevertheless he had a big happy smile on his face. He didn't waste any time as he went through Hansen once again. He slammed his hand down as geyser of water exploded everywhere as they all formed a copy of Kisame, a water clone that was filled with a lot of his chakra. After all, there was a reason why they called him the Tailless Tail Beast. Now it's just me and you, he said. Let's get down to the real fight, shall we? As he tore off the Akaski clothing, the remainder of it, as he cracked his neck. The man then moved as the ground turned, as Naruto moved as well, as the both of them clashed a violent sword fight as Naruto parried each and every one of his attacks. Naruto slammed his hands together as Kisame saw everything went white. He received several nasty punches in the chest and in the stomach. Blood exploded out of his mouth, but he didn't have time to ponder as a feet slammed into his nose, shattering it. The man staggered back with a wild grin on his face he brought Sami at the forward as he shredded right through Naruto, who replaced himself with a log. BAM! A kick slammed into the back of his head, launching him backwards as he ate dirt, his face implanted into the ground. Kisame picked himself up with a snarl. He's really underestimated Kyubi Chinjulke. Well, no more, he says he got to his feet. As Kisame went through Hansen as he called, the surrounding water around him, as it formed, as Naruto felt himself being pulled as he was yanked, the water pressure being powerful as he was trapped right in a dome of water. As Naruto couldn't see Kisame anywhere as he turned. Watch out kid, as Naruto moved, something swirled past him. It teared right into his arm as he winced in pain. His blood started to leak up in the water. The fox started to heal him immediately. As Naruto felt his chakra being sucked out of him. What the hell? Whatever he's doing is just like that sword. You got to get the hell out of here. As Naruto swim down to the bottom, but the more he swim, the more it seemed to follow him. He then turned as something slammed right into him at first. His body was thrown as thing twist and slam right into him again and again and again. As Naruto I was able to pinpoint what it was. It was Kisame. But he was no longer normal. Meanwhile, outside, what the hell is this? Said Samoy as they all gathered as they finished with their clones. As they looked up towards the massive construct of water, Naruto is inside, said Sakura. How do we get him out? Kakashi observed it with his Sharingan. I don't know, he said. Meanwhile, as Naruto was standing still as Samyata merged with Kisame came shotting back towards them. At the last moment, Naruto snapped over his eye and ducked. Both him and Kisame's eyes made contact. As Naruto twirled his foot and brought it down, slamming it in Kisame's skull with tremendous force, a ripple spread out from the point of impact. Kisame's body was thrown as the man was able to recover quickly from the chakra that Samihata was siphoning off of Naruto and he was forcing it back into his partner. As Naruto could feel that he was running out of air, I can't use your chakra that damn sword is gonna absorb it, he said. As a thought clicked into his mind, 
As he stood still, as the water at his feet started to bubble, as Naruto started to force out the remaining chakra inside of his body, before he shot upwards, Kisame chased after him as Naruto moved fast. He then reached his two fingers up as he was close, but the water started to follow as he fired a beam of lightning straight up in the sky. Kisame crashed right into Naruto as he pulled him down into the depths of the water. As Naruto grabbed onto his face, making sure that he would not go anywhere either, he flipped Kisame over. Meanwhile outside, Samui saw the sky darkening. It was then that a beam of lightning was gathered before it shot down towards Dome. Usually, one would expect that everything inside was going to get electrocuted as Sakura's eyes went wide. But that was not what happened as the beam went straight inside the water. Naruto flipped, kissing me over as he grabbed onto him. Kisame tried to bite him as he held onto his mouth. The beam of lightning zapped right into Naruto as Naruto's eyes closed for a quick second. Before they snapped back open, the only thing Kisame saw was electricity. As Naruto shut his mouth, clamped it tight, Kisame couldn't believe the amount of strength that the blonde was now showing. As Naruto forced him downwards, Sami had to try to leech off the chakra that was now pulsing from Naruto until its scales. The scales that was coming from Kisame started to turn into a stone. The sentient sword didn't have a fully developed chakra system it could absorb, but it didn't have a chakra system to keep it fully immune to the system. So, it could not handle nature energy. As the sword started to push it back out to release that energy out of Kisame, which was causing Kisame harm. As Naruto pushed him away from him, Kisame shook his head as he dived back towards Naruto, only for Naruto to raise his hand as Kisame slammed right into it. As Naruto did not even budge, his eyes shining with bright lightning just looked towards him. As Naruto raised his fist, boom, the entire water ripple, the force causing the water to tremble outside as Kisame slammed hard down. As Naruto wastes no time and appear, Boom! The water ripple again. Several more hard punches. The last one, Naruto brought his heel and slammed it into Kisame's chest. The force was so powerful that the entire water sphere exploded from the wild, unkempt nature engine that was pulsing through it that Sami had to refuse to absorb. He refused to just let out there so it ended up clashing with the water surface and it exploded. Both Kisame and Naruto was now falling from mid-ear as Kisame latched out with his weakened self blood was leaking from his nose, his eyes and his mouth. Senjutsu enhanced fist straight to the chest caused negative effect on one. It was only because of Sami Hata while he was still alive as Sami Hata was pouring chakra into heal his wounds. As Naruto grabbed his hand and formed a Rasengan, a screeching sound started to be heard as a Rasengan got infused with lightning and plus nature energy. Kisame eyes went wide but it was too late as Naruto pried his arms up and drive the Rasengan into him. The both of them dropped from the sky like a rocket. Boom! The entire place exploded. The ground was upturned. The water blew away. When everything cleared away, Naruto was sitting on top of Kisame, his hand still planted right in his chest. Kisame's eyes were completely wide and they rolled back. As the man was completely gone, his heart was completely blown to pieces. As Naruto stood there, the water had sapped away much of his nature and jetty man together. As he couldn't sustain for any longer, as the nature and jetty out of his system, the sage mode went with it. As Naruto was about to get to his feet, he felt something. As he leaped away, jumping backwards, he had to move. Several weapons came towards him out of literally nowhere, forcing him to jump deep within the bushes. Samoy and the others came over. Where, where is he? said Sakura as he looked around. As Samoy was confused, this is where he landed. There was Kisame. Kakashi went over and checked Kisame's pulse for anything, but there was nothing. The man was dead, as Samehata was there as well. Kakashi pulled a scroll as he grabbed off the weapon that tried to attack him. As he sealed it away, this will cement their relationship more with Kiri. He also sealed away Kisame's body. But where the hell did Naruto go? A distance away, it was nothing but attacks after attacks. Explosive that forced Naruto out into the forest. 
As Naruto stood there catching his breath, he then heard a voice. Finally, we get some time to talk. As Naruto glanced up towards the figure, as he narrowed his eyes towards a masked man that was sitting on a tree branch looking at him. Took me quite the effort to get this one in one. So, Kayubichi Njoiki, or should I say, God of Lightning. Meanwhile that was going on, the place was an absolute mess. The battle between both brothers had destroyed the landscape. Severed the entire forest around them. Black flames were burning brightly everywhere. Normal flames, the lightning was cackling as Sasuke had pulled lightning from the heavens. The battle between them was destructive and also chaotic. The moment Sasuke was clawing at his neck as something started to emerge from it as Itachi stood there back towards Naruto. You, said Naruto, you know of me, the masked man said, looking unconcerned as his body was just sitting there calmly. There was no reaction or nothing to say that he was afraid of Naruto. Naruto, this is him. As Naruto fist clench. You're the one that released the Nine Tails in the village, said Naruto. Ah, you know of that. Well then, seems like you're on better terms with the fox more than I thought. After all, the other two that were there, they're long dead now. Oh, sorry. Those were your parents, if I'm not mistaken. As Naruto fist clenched even tighter. No need to lose your cool, Kaibuji Njoliki. What am I saying? I should be calling you the god of lightning. Seems like you surpassed your father with the popularity and name already. But I wonder though, have you surpassed him in power? You know I did fight your father once. Quite powerful man. Determined and always focused. Most like you are already, but you still need to grow up a bit more. Your mother, a beauty. A beauty with a shocking, hero of crimson, powerful fighter, known as the Red Death. Seems like the both of them coming together at birth, a powerful being. You have interfered more than once with my goal with the Akaski. Tarnishing my things over and over. Killing my members one by one. And it's gonna stop right here. Your interference is getting on my nerve. And I want you to stay away from anything regarding Nakatsuki until I come for you. Do you understand me, Kayubichi Njoliki? I mean, there's a lot of people that you have close by that can get hurt. That Uchiha friend of yours. That pink hair girl that you seem to have a special friendship with. Even your sensei. What was his name? Oh yes, Kakashi. Or perhaps that girlfriend of yours. Who you seem to love so much. Any one of them could be taken away from you. So I suggest you heed this warning. And stop messing with my plans. Because this will be the last. Just stay a good little boy until I come for you. Naruto said nothing. Don't you have anything to say? The masked man asked. Yeah, one, said Naruto. And what would that be? As Naruto raised his head, his eyes burning with rage. I'm gonna kill you, he said. And I'm gonna make it painful. Painful as possible. Right after I rip that goddamn mask off your face. The man simply laughed. As Naruto passed right through him. As Naruto in front of him vanished. As Naruto destroyed the entire branch that he was on. The man slowly lowered himself down to the ground. Whoa, that was fast. I must say, your speed is something to admire. Your natural speed seemed to be as fast as your father. Or even faster. But you've not yet matched that instant transportation of his. With a higher shame. What the hell? I passed through him. Must be some sort of ability because of the Sharingan. Try again. Make sure you rip him apart this time. Said Kurama. As Naruto moved, he passed right through the man again who laughed. The man reached for the back of Naruto's neck. As Naruto was gone, 
A rough thing can destroy the ground as it passed right to the man. As Nurka skid back, Nurka slammed both hands together as the man merely walked forward. I've already told you once, Kyubich and Juliki. There is no way that you can. Nurka was gone like that. Bam! The masked man was thrown as he slammed into the ground. Boom! A fist smashed into his gut. The man cried out in pain as he felt like his insides were being electrocuted over and over. As he leaped away, he quickly sucked himself in a swirling vortex as he was gone. Kakashi and the group arrived a second later as they saw. It was a Naruto standing there but a mass of nothing but lightning. It had a humanoid shape. Naruto said Samui. As a mass of lightning turned towards her, before it started to condense and return. Back to Naruto. As Naruto stood there, where the hell did you run after she asked. I was attacked, said Naruto, as he looked towards his palm. Well, that worked, he thought to himself. Meanwhile, the masked man appeared as he dropped down towards the ground. As he ripped off his mask and threw it to the corner side, coughing up a lot of blood. As his body spasm, what the hell happened? Setsu came over and asked him. As the man couldn't speak as his body was spasming, as he coughed up more blood. As he was confused. How? Oh, how did he get through his kamui? As the man coughed up more blood. He, after a while, started to slow down with the coughing. As the spasm got less and less. The man lied on his back. His face covered by the darkness. What happened? Asked Zetsu. The nine tails Shinjuki. He hurt you? Zetsu said, sounding completely surprised. The masked man touched his stomach. Where the wound was slowly healing, thanks to the Hoshirama cells that were connected to his body. At the last moment, he saw the flicker and he activated the Kamui. But somehow, the lightning phased right into his dimension and slammed into his stomach. He wasn't even sure that Naruto knew what he did. But that lightning was able to just phase right through it and appear, but how was that even possible? The man slowly picked up himself. It seems that the Kyubich and Juliki is more dangerous than we thought, said Zetsu. That is not a problem. Nagato will handle him. Is everything going as planned? Yes, at the moment, as we speak, said Zetsu. Go, oh, watch a battle between Sasuke and Itachi. Make sure that you're not seen. And Zetsu made his way on the ground. The masked man sat down as he picked up his mask. As he brought it back up to his face. A part of his face was messed up, like it was badly damaged as he placed back on the mask. As he placed his hand towards his stomach, just a few hits, there was so much pain. He really underestimated the 90s Jinjuki too much, and now he was paying the price. Well, never again. But it seems that the boy was closer to the fox than he thought. After all, who else but the fox could tell him those sensitive information? Because back then he was simply a child. A child that couldn't talk or walk or do anything, but he knew these things now. That meant the fox was telling him all of this information. So, how far is the relationship gone? For the fox to completely bond like him like the ATL Jinjuliki. For him to become a perfect Jinjuliki as well. The masked man had no idea. Meanwhile, back towards the fight. Sasuke had been rid of the cursed mark. Completely, it had been removed. By Itachi a last hope. To remove that snake from his brother. Erasing Urchimaru existence completely. As the man made his way, Sasuke was currently unable to do anything. Itachi could feel the others coming towards his location. As he arrived towards Sasuke soon enough, Sasuke staggered back towards the stone as Itachi reached up and poked him on his forehead, just like what he used to do when they were kids. Sasuke was surprised at that, as Itachi gave him a smile before he fell and collapsed on the ground, dead right in front of his brother. Sasuke stood there, his body devoid of chakra, barely enough to keep him moving as he looked down towards the dead body of his brother. As Sasuke eyes shifted, his Sharingan activated without his command and shifted into something else, the Mangetio Sharingan. As he collapsed face first, right on top of his brother, Zetsu instantly went back on the ground. Their fight had made their way to a long era. 
a part away from where Naruto had faced off against Kisame. As they had so quickly made his way back and informed the masked man that the battle was over. It was instantaneous by the masked man making his way over there. But it was too late as Naruto stood there with a seal in his hand. As Itachi body was sealed away inside. The pink hair Konoichi was working on Sasuke. What now? Asked Zetsu. Let them take him. There will be time. Let him think that Itachi died for a good cause because his brother was really a psychopath. But soon enough I will reveal the truth to him. To make him realize that that village that he's in is corrupted down to the core. To make him realize his brother was used for a mission because of this accursed world. Then and then he will see. The right way is only my side. Their friendship won't be enough to save him from that. Watch out Naruto Uzumaki. All of this is going to be falling down soon enough. Meanwhile, at the hidden rain, the five paths of pain stood up of the water. As they were just looking down. Down below was Jiraiya. Hand missing, black rods in his back. As he was sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. The man was not dead yet. As Jiraiya had stayed behind to gather information on the paths, which he wrote on Fukatsuku back. A code that Naruto would figure out. As he was just come here to gather information, but it seems like things turned out more than he expected. He knew that Naruto was going to blame himself for this. He didn't want to. He didn't want Naruto to blame himself. Because Naruto was going to think that he should have gone with him. Something that Jiraiya dread. He hopes Natty. Put her foot down to stop him from coming here by himself. Because knowing that breath, he would try to come here and get revenge. And there was no one in the village that could hold him back from doing so. He at least they pleaded with him. Or Snaddy prepared something just in case. To stop him. As he didn't want his godson coming here. Before everything was ready. Before he knew the truth about pain. Something that he could not tell them. The last thing that flashed through his mind before. He went into blissful death. Was that he was sorry for all the mistakes of the past, for everything, and for the pain that those who were close to him was going to feel now, knowing that he was dead, as his body drifted off. The Tendo pain had a smile on his face. To the death of Jerry of the Sonin, free of the binding that his once teacher used to have on him. Conan stood there, she said nothing, she just watched. The water treading along. Time skip. Sasuke finally came too. As he was in a bed. He was not home. Well, at Naruto's place where he was sleeping recently. As he looked around, as he saw the ceiling. He must be in some kind of motel or something. The information then flashed through his mind of what he did. He did. He finally got rid of Hidachi. He made him pay for what he did to their clan, their family. But yet he felt so hollow inside. Knowing that he was the last of his kind now. The last Uchiha that remained. Yes, he killed his brother. He was the last one left. He's wanted this for the longest time, so why does he feel this way? Why does he feel this pain coursing through him? He wasn't sure why. But his brother was no gone. And he was alone. All alone, he thought to himself. Well, it didn't seem like he was all alone as the door opened up. Sasuke can sit Sakurashi enter. You're weak. As he looked towards her, she had a smile on her face. Her hair was tied up. As the sun from outside just shined on her, giving her this remarkable look, a look of beauty. It brought a smile to his face as he spoke without thinking. You look really beautiful, he said. A blush spread across her face, surprised that Sasuke said that. As a smile didn't wave her or fault. He seemed calm, something that she was glad for, that he was okay. Meanwhile, at Kanoha, Snaddy and her world just shattered, broke. Once again, she had to lose someone that was close to her, someone that she cared about. She had to hold it in though. I understand, she said. I will be back to inform Naruto boy, said Fukazaku. I wouldn't want to do it while he's out there on a the mission. As Snaddy nodded, as the toad poofed away, as she just sat there in her chair, she waved her hand. The envoys left her immediately. She already sent Shizune out. 
The woman lowered her head towards the dex and cried. That bastard. That perverted bastard. He promised her that he would be back. He was just gonna scout for information. And now he was gone. She couldn't stop the tears. She couldn't stop the tears from flowing out of her eyes. As her head was down low. Tears pooling down. Her mind quickly ran on Ruto. How is he gonna think? How is he gonna feel about all of this? She knew one thing though. If he found out he was gonna want to go there by himself. He was gonna try to go there no matter what. None of them in the village had the literal power to hold him back or stop him if he really wanted to go. But she had to make sure that he didn't. She knew that he wouldn't be thinking straightly. He was gonna blame himself. He was gonna blame himself for not going along with Jaraya. Something that she could not allow to happen. She knew what she was doing was something hard but she had to do it. She had to make sure that he didn't do anything risky. She had to confine him because she could not lose him as well. She won't lose him either. She thought to herself. She picked herself up as she wiped away the tears, forcing her face to return into a neutral look as she made her way towards the door. Her hand stopped. As her hand trembled as she broke down once again, unable to open the door, she took several deep breaths as she calmed herself. Before she opened the door, as she looked towards Shizune, meanwhile, so, Senruto, how are you dealing with all of this? Well, it's weird, said Sasuke, as the both of them sat on the roof. After all, I've wanted for the longest time to make him pay. But now you don't feel anything, Senruto. How do you figure that much, said Naruto? Despite everything, he was still. Your family. And now you have no more. Yeah, said Sasuke as he looked down. Well, that's wrong, said Naruto. I'm still here. Sakura is as well. And we're like your small little family. Packed on little team, said Naruto. And as long as we're here, you won't ever be alone. <laughs> Thanks, said Sasuke. As Naruto placed a hand towards his heart. What's wrong, said Sasuke. Huh, don't know, said Naruto. Just feel really strange. As Naruto shrugged it off. Meanwhile, at the hidden rain. So you killed him? Yes. Said Nagato as he looked towards a masked man. Jury of the sun is no more. This is going to piss off the Jinjulki, you know that, said the masked man. That was the intentional plan. But this time, I will be going for him. Well, you can go to Kanoha for him then, said the masked man. When will you be ready? As soon as I get a replacement for one of my packs that Jare took out. I'll be ready to go to Kanoha for him myself. Do not underestimate him. He's proven time and time again to be tricky and unpredictable. It doesn't matter how powerful he is. Or what he does, or how unpredictable he is. I am a god. And all will fall in front of a god. If you say so, said the last man. Just remember I warned you. If you slip up, it won't be your paths that he take. He'll be coming for you. The both of you, the masked man says, he looked towards the both of them. As he was gone, a swirling vortex. It seems like he's concerned. Yes, but not for my well-being said Nagato. Seems like something happened between him and the Jinjulke. Are you thinking that he went after him? Perhaps. But does that mean that he lost? Perhaps, said Nagato. Then you need to take this more seriously. I am, Nagato said. He will not win Conan. He would not overcome a god. Time skip. The group was making their way back home. So, how's he taking it, Kakashi asks. As Sasuke and Sakura at the front, with Samui behind them, slightly as the three of them were talking, as Naruto and Kakashi were a bit behind. Well, so far so good, said Naruto. He's still struggling a bit, but we're here for him. So everything is ought to be fine, said Naruto. You seem weird, said Kakashi. What's up with that? What are you talking about, said Naruto. Well, you seem on edge for some reason. Naruto sighed, I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling that I just can't shake. 
like something bad is happening or something bad happened. I'm sure it's nothing, said Kakashi. After all, we would have been told already. Yeah, I guess you're right, said Naruto. As he figured Jerry should be back from his mission by now, and Sinai probably plunged him over the village because he's been a pervert. So, said Naruto, I take it that you visit Yujito once again, said Naruto. What, what are you talking about, said Kakashi, as he put his face in his book. You know that the hospital staff, there's a woman in there that really kind of liked me. Don't tell Samui, said Naruto. And I told her to keep an eye out. For me, said Kakashi. So you're spying on me now. Well, I wanted to see if you were going to take the initiative. Because if you weren't, I was going to set things up. And how do you know what I want? Well, she's a perv like you reading that book out in broad daylight. Well, she keeps hers to herself. When she's on mission, she kind of read it though. So I figure both of you get along quite well. Hmm, <laughs> said Kakashi. So you're not going to tell me that you did visit her? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. As Naruto sigh, well if you don't know, you should know that she's coming along great. And her system is stabilizing, but she still can't leave the hospital bed yet. As Kakashi said nothing because he already knew that, things were, well, developing. But he wouldn't tell Naruto that, for Naruto just used against him. As he simply shrugged it off. They arrived towards the village. As Naruto entered, he felt more strange, like something bad was happening. But yet still he couldn't shrug it. Are you okay? said Samui. Yeah, I'm fine, said Naruto. Confused what this feeling was. As they made their way towards the office, they informed Sinadi of the good news. Two other Akaski members were taken down. As Naruto saw a look on Shizune's face before he entered, she smiled at him, but if smile seemed weak, like she was struggling to keep it up. As Naruto made his way inside, strangely enough, he sensed more than the regular amount of Anbus that were supposed to be in here. As he was confused, he stepped inside and glanced around when he noticed the look on Sinai's face. He then noticed there was a toad beside her. Oh, Fugazaku. He glanced around to see Jerry, but he did not see Jerry anywhere. The office was really silent as Kakashi looked towards the toad before looking at Sinai's face. As Naruto mind refused to think something like that, so he was not even thinking about it. As Samui neared her eyes, something was wrong. Lady Hokage said Sakura. As Sasuke glanced around, something was really wrong. What the hell was going on, he thought to himself. Suddenly, four envoys surrounded Naruto. As Naruto blinked, his hand twitched, but he did not fight. As he didn't know what the hell was going on. These were the envoys that belonged to the Hokage. Bachan, what's going on? I'm sorry, she said. Suddenly, wooden vines broke from the ground and wrapped around Naruto tight, restraining him. Samui reached for her blade, but the Anvu placed a hand on her hand, stopping her. As Nadi took a breath, I'm so sorry, Naruto, she said. What do you mean, you're sorry? What's going on? What? What is this? As he tried to break out of the wooden vines, but they held on to him tight and secured. As another Anvu came forward and placed a ceiling tag on him. Hokage sama what is the meaning of this? asked Samui. He has done nothing bad. This is just merely a precaution. So he doesn't do something stupid and get himself killed. What What the hell are you talking about? Fugasaku Sai, Naruto boy. What's going on? Say Naruto. This doesn't make any sense. What the hell am I going to do so bad? As he looked at the toad and at the toad's face. His mind was refusing to think it but his mind was saying it to him the first moment he entered when he saw Fukazaku there. No. No, 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 said Naruto. As Snavi looked towards him as tears came in her eyes. The wooden vine near Naruto started to creak. As Tendo looked towards Snavi who nodded. Who knocked out Naruto as someone flinched. But Snavi looked towards her sternly to calm down. As Kakashi looked towards her. I know. There's a lot of explaining to do, but I couldn't have him going berserk and leave in the village to get revenge. As Sasuke looked towards the toad, does he remember what Naruto said to him about Jiraiya of the Sun and going to research the leader of the Akaske? So this means that he's dead. Snadi knew that this was extreme, but she had to. If she did not, Naruto would run off, and she was afraid that none of them could hold on to him. On the other hand, Tendo was shocked. They were actually being broken. 
How awful is this boy? He thought to himself. But guys, give me and subscribe right here. If you want to see this part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications to be posted. But I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.